Hello and welcome to another API Builder training video. In this video, we'll be taking a closer look at API Builder's flow definition, as well as flow nodes. We'll cover the following topics. What is a flow? What are the components of a flow? What are flow nodes? And how are flows created? We'll first take a look at the greeting flow that comes with every API Builder project. As a reminder, you can create a project using the API Builder CLI with API Builder init test. That's how I created the one that we're looking at right now. Uh, so I'll just start this project up. And we'll go to the API Builder console. And here we have our project running. Go to API doc and test and we'll look at the greeting API that comes with every project. And we'll look at the flow. This view may look familiar to you if you watched our previous video on API first development. A flow is an acyclic directed graph containing flow nodes, which each have their own operation. Currently, a flow is only executed by an endpoint, which is responsible for providing runtime inputs to the flow. A flow has a start or entry point as seen here at the top. And then the end is denoted by the leaf nodes here at the bottom. A flow node is a node on the flow graph that can invoke specific functions. If we click on a node, we can see four key components, the name, the method, parameters, and outputs. The name is just the display name that's shown here on the graph. The method is the specific uh, function we want that node to do. Certain nodes may have multiple or maybe only one method that you can do. This is a condition node, so we just have some simple uh, conditions that you can apply on parameters. Parameters are the inputs that we provide into the node. So different methods may have different uh, quantities of parameters. Outputs are the locations on the context that we want to save our results from our node. The context is a sort of whiteboard where you can assign variable values from various flow nodes. So for example, here we have a location uh, $.equals, which means uh, on the context there's an equals variable that will equal the result uh, if, if this node resolves is true. When a node executes, only one of its outputs will be used. For example, if the node uses the false output, then it will return a bad request to the user. If the node uses a uh, true output, then it'll go ahead and continue down this happy path. Flows can currently be generated in a couple ways. You can generate a flow by importing an API definition. This is something you might have seen in our API first development video. Also, you can go to models and generate endpoints from here as well. Uh, and the endpoints will be tied to flows. When you first create an API Builder project, you get several flow nodes right out of the box. So we'll go back to our greet flow and we'll take a look at what we have. Um, ignoring the model section for now, uh, we have a REST node, which is a node for making a REST call to some endpoint. So you can see here we have all the standard methods, uh, and then you can provide the URL as well as other HTTP parameters. We also supply several core nodes that you can add. We have an authorization node, which allows you to uh, import your credentials that are saved in your configuration. This can be an OAuth uh, config, basic config, uh, or API key that can be used to hit some uh, external service. We also have a base64 node. Uh, this can be used to encode or decode uh, base64 strings. We also have code blocks, which are ways you can go down and execute code blocks in the codeblocks directory on a project. Uh, we also have a compose node, which is very uh, popular. Uh, you've probably seen us use this in previous videos where you can essentially use the .js template engine to create strings and objects. We also have a condition node, which I showed before. The condition node lets you uh, perform certain conditions on multiple parameters. We also have a delay node, which allows you to just insert a delay on an execution of a flow. Uh, we have a HTTP node here, which allows you to set HTTP uh, body and headers. Uh, these are body and headers that are going to be sent back to the user who's hitting API Builder. We also have a JSON node, which can be used to just do parse or stringify, which is very common JSON methods. And lastly, we have a set context node, uh, which can be used to just 
set values on the context, which is, as I mentioned before, kind of whiteboard in API Builder. Now, if you look up here, we have a model section. Uh, these are showing up because I've configured an SQL connector to a local SQL database. And so these uh, show up automatically. Uh, each one represents a table here. So I can drag these on and perform some sort of CRUD operation on that database. Uh, all automatically. Thank you for watching this API Builder training video and we hope to see you back here again.